Hello, welcome back to the sixth episode of the Most Child Podcast. My name is Joe Altaffer, back with my dad, Bill Altaffer. And today we were going to talk about his top five most remote places he's ever been to. So take it away, dad. Well, the first one will be Socotra, which is in the Indian Ocean off of uh, Somalia. It belongs to Yemen, but it's off of Somalia. The island's about... 80 miles long and 40 miles wide. And the whole place, the whole island, is now a UNESCO site. I went there in the 90s. It wasn't a UNESCO site there yet. But it's certainly one of the most unique places on the earth. It's also the license on my car. Uh, I got the idea of doing that when Feynman, the uh, nanotechnologist who had this love affair with Tuva, made his license Tuva. So I made mine Socotra. Anyway, it's uh, a dry island and uh, 5,000 feet tall. Very difficult to get to. Really? Wow. So what? how do you get there? Do you go by plane or? You can only get there half the year because of the weather. It's the origin of the monsoon begins there off the Somali plain. So part of the year when the monsoon starts there uh, it, uh airplane can't fly because it'll get mud and soot and sand in the engine and there's really no harbor so the seas are very rough so it's very remote difficult to get to you you get in from yemen and then now that they've had the war in recent years uh i believe you can now get in from dubai wow okay so are there any other unique aspects to socotra the most unique aspect is the dragon blood tree, which they call the upside down tree. It looks like it's the roots sticking up and the main body down into the sand and earth. And it produces a type of red uh, sap, like maple syrup, which they use for medicinal purposes. Some say it works, some say it doesn't. But uh, the island has uh, very little tourism. When I was there... There was a four-room sort of hotel. I understand now they have uh, basic places. We stayed in tents and caves. Uh, goats and fish are their main enterprise. There's about 50,000 people living on the island. Mm -hmm. And the people at the top of the mountain, and you have to take the very rugged uh, dirt roads to get to the top, uh, speak a different language than the people and they live in caves up there. They speak a different language than the people who live around the shore that fish. So it is a very unique island. Some of the natives have blue eyes, and they think that that dates back to when the time that uh, Socotra was Christian. And, uh, yeah. And po or possibly Alexander the Great came through there was another theory. Wow, that's that's pretty big distances. The other day I told you about getting arrested in Diego Garcia. Well, the Americans have had their eye on Socotra, and what they would like to do is move the uh, Air Force base that has the nukes in Diego Garcia, if they could, to Socotra, because it's a thousand miles shorter distance to the targets they have planned in the Middle East. But that didn't happen. It's probably not going to happen. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... Moving on to number two, in no particular order, what's the uh, second? I'll go with a, an island group, two islands, Wallace and Futuna, which are off of New Caledonia in the South Pacific, and they're just not well known. And what I like about them the most is they're not set up for tourism. Uh, there's very few places to stay there. It's extremely expensive, but the beauty of it is it's tropical, and... Uh, the tropical uh, terrain goes up into beautiful mountains and valleys and waterfalls. And uh, it's a, you know, the beaches are outstanding with nobody on them. The natives years ago, because it's a French property, uh, were approached by the Club Med people to uh, do a Club Med there. 
and it would bring in a lot of money and et cetera to the people, but it would bring in the Western civilization that they didn't want. So, yeah. so they said, no, we're not doing it. And they uh, did not allow uh, Club Med to come in. Is that why you would say it's not very well known? Uh, yes. And it just, it just, nobody knows it's there. It's outstanding. What's the population around um, that area? About 20,000 people. 20,000. Okay. So definitely, you know, not the most remote in terms of population. There are people living there, but it's hard to get to. If you go on Expedia and you look uh, for a place to stay, you'll read comments about how overly expensive it is uh, for basic accommodations and how unfriendly the people are. <laughs> and if you order food, it's not coming for a long time. And uh, But... That's typical of the old South Pacific. So I think that this represents what the South Pacific is all about. In other words... What they kind of used to be? Well, if nobody meets you at the airport, it's because they went fishing. Uh Uh-huh. And that's just the way it is. Gotcha. So it's kind of like an untouched area, kind of preserved. Wallace and Futuna. Wallace and Futuna. Okay, so moving on to the next one. What's number three? The next one is a moving object, which is also a license on one of my cars, which is the Ara Nui, which is uh, a ship that goes between Papia de Tahiti and the Marquesa Islands, which the Marquesas are on the equator. Tahiti is south of the equator. So it's a ship that goes about eight times a year from Papia de uh, to the Tuamotus, which are atolls, they're not islands. It goes there and, and returns to there before it comes back to Tahiti. And then it goes on to the eight inhabited Marquesan Islands. And you visit all the ones that are uh, inhabited. So would you say that you picked Arnui because of the the places the boat visits? Yeah, and I, uh, I, was, I was told about it one time when I was on another trip that we've already I don't think we've spoken about this one. Okay. The Atlantic Ocean Island trip. I met a, a I don't think so. A guy who told me he'd been there and I wrote it down in my mind and uh it's just an outstanding thing. When I got on a ship in Papiette, there was a German lady out on the deck and it was her third trip and I thought, That's really weird. Three times, same thing. How, what's that all about? Uh-huh. And I, I got it. I would go back again. It's it's really unique. When I did it, it was the Aranui two. Uh, when I was told about it, it was the Aranui one. Today, it's the Aranui five. They they keep making the ship a little bit bigger, which isn't good. The same boat, same name, different boat. Okay, so it's not like they're running five different boats. No, all. no. Okay. What, what and it, and these islands can only be reached either by the Aranui. Or a private yacht. Oh, There's, I see. Okay. There, is, there are a few meta strips, dirt strips for a plane possibly to get there on a meta vac, but the, the, it's not, it's not Hawaii people. And this is an island group that had fifty thousand people when the Spanish discovered it, but due to diseases that they brought to the indigenous people, today there's only five thousand people. So how difficult is it to plan a trip on the Aranui? Because you said, you know, it's going to remote areas. Is it hard to... You contact me because I'm the West Coast representative. (laughs) No problem. Okay. It's not a problem. You just get yourself to Papiete and uh, we'll do the rest. Okay, awesome. Well, moving on to the next one, number four. Number four is Aldabra. Sounds magical, right? So we have to go. It's an atoll. And it's the second largest coral atoll in the world. But still, you have to get yourself to the Seychelles Islands and in, in the Indian Ocean. And then you go 400 miles south. Um, sometimes there's a few uh, rangers on the island. Otherwise, it's, it's, there's nobody on it. And what was great about it was we, we arrived there in the morning on our expedition ship. When the tide uh, had been low and now it's rising and we got in Zodiac boats and then we swam from them with snorkel and fins and the current took us into this atoll. So we're like in a river stream within the ocean, whereas you're looking at the fish as you're going along, you're going with the fish into the middle of this atoll. Mm -hmm. And that was like an hour, hour and a half activity. 
So and, is there no population, like native population on this area at all? Uh, just giant tortoises. And that's uh. what the <laughs> island is named after. Then in the afternoon really? after we had lunch, they took us in the Zodiac boats back into the middle of this beautiful tropical atoll with all the crystal clear blue aquamarine water tones. And then we rode the current out to the ship. So we rode in in the morning, rode out in the afternoon. Outstanding. Aldabra. Very, very worth doing. And so how, how do you kind of get to Aldabra again? You have it, to go to the Seychelles Islands. You have to go to Seychelles. Yes. And then so you fly over there and that's kind of how and you... And then you need to get some kind of a dive boat or a private yacht charter to take you there. Okay. All right. So moving on to number five. What's number five? Rodrigues. A lot of people would read it and call it Rodriguez, but it's a French uh, territory such as Reunion and Mauritius. And it's uh, east of Mauritius, about uh, almost four hours by plane. And uh, you have to go to Mauritius to get there by airplane. You could go by yacht. And um, like I say, it's called Rodrigues. It's the it's an island very low, and it has a outer uh, protective reef. And so inside, the water is calm. And it's the first place, and it was, I guess, uh, 15 years ago, First place I ever saw kite surfing, uh -huh. and there was a French champion out there bounding over the waves 15, 20 feet in the air, and I go, wow, what's that? So I saw that for the first time in Rodrigues. Uh, cool place, colonial buildings, very low key. Uh, I looked it up the other day, and now they have about 10 nice small resorts, but uh, when I was there, there were only two. Uh -huh. There is a ship that comes from Mauritius to their uh, port uh, every couple of weeks. So that is a possible slower, neat way to go there. But uh, otherwise, you can just get a flight every couple of days out of Mauritius. Gotcha. So kind of looking at all five of these places and, you know, boats as well, which out of them would you want to kind of do or visit again in terms of, you know, what, what you're interested to see? Uh, Aldabra and the Aranui. I would do the, both of those in a heartbeat. Why not the others? Because when I went to Socotra, there wasn't a paved road there. Uh -huh. And the airport was open air. There were these, uh, uh, to check your luggage, we, we said that the goats did it. You know, the x-ray you go through at the airport security, goats did it. But because uh, it was primitive. Uh -huh. Today, they've got a paved road into Hadibo, the capital. And I, I just don't want to go back. I, I, it's going to be ruined. And so I don't want to see that change. You don't want to change your perspective on the place? No. Okay. So also kind of relating back to all five of these trips, which ones would you say are the easiest to replicate for just anyone who's listening? Uh, definitely the Aranui. The Aranui? Yes. How so? Well, you make a boat reservation with me, I said, and... Uh, we send you out. Uh, the different parts of the year are different, according to the rain. Yeah. Uh, some are greener, but any time's a good time to go. And uh, it's an all-inclusive package. You get on the ship, your laundry's included, your tips included, the wine's included. It's just, uh, you know, like Club Med, but it's floating. Now, I could have brought up other remote places this is about remote places i could have brought up golf island and rock hall island and tristan de cuna but you haven't been to rock hall no i haven't <laughs> it's just a rock and that's another thing i don't go to places basically if they have no history if they if they're just a obscure position, mark it doesn't landmark. mean anything to me tristan uh -huh. de cuna is different there's people on it and that's a neat place to go to and golf island uh there's only four weathermen on it but those are there's there's Bouvet, there's places which they don't have any people in Bouvet, but there are more remote places in these five, but these are the fun places to visit. Oh, these are your most favorite. Exactly. Okay, well, hopefully we might even make a, another video kind of elaborating more on the idea of remote places in the future. Um, I'll leave it at that. And this is the end of the sixth episode of the Most Trial Podcast. We hope you can listen to our past episodes on Spotify and YouTube. And please let us know any feedback for 
any episodes in the future. We love to hear from anyone. And if there's any specific place you want to want us to talk about, um, please let us know. So thanks again and stay safe.